Hey there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to talk about what I often say is kind of the elephant in the room. And it's if you've followed me for any amount of time at all, you've heard me talk about rhythm, and counting and timing and all that. <laughs> and so I've got two purposes today. The first thing is I want to take a, a minute and demonstrate to you, prove to you, whatever you want to call it, that rhythm is truly the single most important thing when it comes to your blues soloing. And I don't mean rhythm as in like rhythm guitar and lead guitar, which is all the same. The reality is that rhythm is singularly responsible for how you sound. And all you have to do to, to, to realize that is think about the fact that, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton, you know, B.B. King, Albert King, Freddie King, Johnny Winter, the list goes on and on and on of fantastic, amazing, you know, blues players. But they all basically use the same five notes. Okay, we're, you know, we're all playing a pentatonic scale. When it comes to playing over a blues in A, we're all using A, C, D, E, and G most of the time, if not all of the time. Okay, so 95, 98% of the time, that's, that's the five notes that are used. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so clearly it's not the note choice. Okay, learning, learning more notes, getting more notes somehow, you know, adding, adding different scales or, uh, you know, different patterns. Well, first of all, different patterns usually doesn't add any more notes. It's just different ways to play the notes you already know. So it's not about that, okay? And we only have one other thing we can do, and that's rhythm. We, we can't change anything else, okay? So let me, let me prove a point really quick here. I'm gonna throw on a jam track, show you, show you what I mean. All right, so here I've got basic blues in A, nothing fancy. I'm gonna use what I call my, my, my four note solo pattern. Okay, so the basic, I'll say building block of, of most anything is eighth notes. But you'll notice that if all I do is play eighth notes, things get kind of dull. I stop even if I add some other notes even if I add some bends it just gets kind of dull If I start to add some interest, some variation, with any luck, that's something that I don't have to convince you of. I think it's pretty obvious, particularly when I when I put them that close together, right? The rhythm is what makes it. The, the rhythm is what makes a boring player sound interesting. You'll notice that I'm not necessarily playing things that are super fast or super complicated. I didn't change. I didn't add a bunch more notes. I didn't, you know, I had bends and double stops before. I did bends and double stops after all those things. There's nothing particularly different except the rhythm. So now that you see that, and, and I'm just gonna go with, I'm gonna assume that you agree with me at this point, right? That, that the rhythm is the important part. And you always hear me talk about it. You always hear me talk about, you gotta count and play, right? You gotta do this stuff. But obviously it's hard. If it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. <laughs> and what makes it hard is the fact that Every other instrument on the planet, you know, piano players, horn players, um, gosh, just uh, string players, you know, like violins and cellos and stuff, they all have to count time from day one. They have traditional musical notation in front of them. They have to read it. It has beats attached. It's 
they don't if they don't count the beats they can't play the music okay guitar is just different we tend to play by ear a lot of people are self-taught so the idea of counting you know one and two and three and four and all that kind of stuff is very foreign okay so this might be complicated it might not i'm not really sure but what's important is that i have for you right now i'm going to show you a process it's a very straightforward very simple just takes a few steps process to improve your counting improve your timing and ultimately improve your soloing and in fact as a side benefit not just your soloing everything you play and it'll make you faster too <laughs> it's everything rhythm is, rhythm helps everything it's foundational every amount of time that you invest in this process doing this thing i'm about to show you is going to pay off down the road whether it's 10 minutes or 10 hours or 100 hours you're going to get better you don't have to think about it okay so let me show you the process it starts with something that i call a rhythm figure so you'll notice that we have some notes here but the note heads i'll say are are all the same they're just they're just like slashes, okay? That means that they have no particular musical value. They're just a rhythm, okay? Now, what's important here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to do this uh, in a swing feel. So I have this guy right up here. This is called a metric modulation. Now, don't worry if none of this makes sense to you. I'm going to talk about it. You're going to get the hang of it. it you're going to probably just pick it up as we go. It's not that difficult. But if you simply do what I do and say what I say as I go through this process, you don't have to read any of this. You don't have to know what any of this means. I'm just going to explain it because it only takes a second. So what this symbol means that I've circled is that whenever you see two eighth notes together, okay, and we have a pair here, a pair here, a pair here, and a pair here, we're going to count that as if it's a quarter note and an eighth note in a triplet group. Again, you don't have to know what that means. That's fine. All it means is that we're gonna count one and for the first part and uh for the second part, okay? Now, some people count triplets as one triplet, two triplet. I count them one and uh, two and uh. And truth be told that uh is spelled D-U-H like duh. Doesn't matter. One and uh, two and uh. I don't care if you say, you know, one apples, pears, grapes. It really doesn't matter what you say, as long as you get three syllables, <laughs> okay? So, again, does not matter. And this is just kind of to give you the, the skinny on why I'm about to write what I'm about to write, which is one and. So that particular note happens on one, holds through the and, then on a, uh, I'm going to strike that one, two and a. Uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. And again, even if that doesn't make one iota of sense to you, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Do this. Start by simply counting what's on the screen and we're gonna get our foot moving along with it. Okay, so one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. Right, so my foot on, on the numbers goes down on the uh, comes up. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clap, what we call clap the rhythm. You either clap it or hum it. Since I want you to count out loud, you can't really hum. So I'm simply gonna go one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. Now, if you've never, ever, 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 ever done this before, that might be really hard. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how much experience you have. I don't know, maybe you've played other instruments in the past. I have no way to know any of that. Okay, so I'm starting with the very, very basics. If you can't do what we just did, don't go on yet. Press pause, work on that for a little while. It might take a week. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Take your time. Think of it this way. This is the most foundational, elemental, important Thing you can possibly do on your instrument. This will make everything you ever learn for the rest of time easier and sound better. So is it worth it? I think so. All right, let me show you the next thing. Once I've got to where I can clap it, I'm going to play a single note, an A. Okay, I'm using a blues in A for my track. So I'm going to use an A to play. And I'm using it at the 10th fret of the second string. If you prefer to use you know, uh, the fifth fret on the first string, sort of, you know, box one it. I'm again, I'm 
thinking about my four note solo pattern. Very simple, 10th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret on the top two strings. So my root is that 10th fret on the second string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count and play. One and duh, two and duh, three and duh, four and duh, one and duh, two and duh, three and duh, four and duh. Again, I don't know how easy or how hard that's gonna be for you, but make sure you can do it. You don't have to go fast. You just have to be able to do kind of steady uh, and even. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, about there will be fine. Okay, you don't have to go fast. Because what I have is I have these very special jam tracks for you to play along with. Let me show you what the slowest one sounds like. Three and uh, four. So I'm gonna use that just play one note thing. But listen to what you're gonna hear. Bell that you can try to play along with. So with just that one note. A three and a four and a. So you can practice your counting and you'll know if you're there. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. Again, I'm just starting with the single note. Now, as that goes by, you don't have to get them all. You don't even have to always use the root note. Example, I could change, that would be okay. But what I'm gonna do is play just one note. And I'm gonna do that basically until you're kind of bored of it. And then I'm gonna try to change just the last note, three and four, uh, one. So see how I just changed the last note? good at that and you find like that's kind of boring what you try to do is you try to change the first and the last note so you get something like this one uh two uh three uh four uh right nice and simple one uh two uh three and uh four and uh and when you get the hang of that you try to mess up some things See, I'm starting to make up stuff. Two and uh, three and, but I keep the time all the time. And again, it doesn't matter. I could go like to box one if I wanted. Okay, that's fine. You can repeat something like a double stop. That's fine. I could go like if you're comfortable, box four. I just want to show you that what's important is not the notes that you choose, but that you keep it in time. And you can kind of use, if you find yourself sort of getting bored, kind of looking for more notes or more interesting things and not concentrating so much on the rhythm anymore because you got it, that's good. Okay, so that, that boredom that creeps in with the notes that you're playing tells you that you're getting that rhythm down. And as you play along with the track, if you find that you play it and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I did that right. I didn't hear the click track. I didn't hear the cowbell. Well, if you didn't hear the cowbell, then you were probably playing at the same time and you probably got it right. So if you hear the, the cowbell plainly and clearly, that's not good. That means you didn't play. <laughs> so if it went and you didn't, you should have. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a good thing you can do. But resist the temptation to just use your ear and just play along with it. It's really fun, but you really wanna, you really wanna also count to the best of your ability. Count first, get that down, then turn on the track. Okay, now that was the slow speed. If you get really good at that and you're starting to play with it and you're starting to mess things up a little bit, you could try it a little bit faster. I have a medium speed track as well. And for this medium speed track, I'm gonna start with one note. I actually missed a note. Let's try that again. Right, so again, 
When that gets easy, maybe change the last note. Right? And keep doing that. And maybe start, maybe use a different pair of notes. Or change the first and the last. There's a lot of different things you can do. Now you're starting to be creative. I played one extra. And you just, again, keep working over that at that tempo and it gets comfortable, that, that gets in your ear and you've got it, right? It's, it, you memorize it, it's, it's just a part of you. You don't, have to, you don't have to worry about, oh, can I remember this down the road? It, it doesn't work that way. If you spend time practicing this way, you're learning, you're training yourself to focus on the rhythm and keep that front and center and the note choice secondary. It's one of the hardest shifts to make is to switch from concentrating just on notes all the time to concentrating on rhythm primarily and have that always going. And then you start to choose some notes. Now, you might be uh, even, you know, more adept at this. You might have more experience. You might be a better player. Maybe you played other instruments where you've had to count. You feel comfortable with that. I have a fast speed track as well. Try this. A one, a two, a three, a four. A that gets easy, change the last note, or the first and the last. Or I can make mess up all kinds of stuff. I think you get the idea. And probably a lot of the ideas are gonna be comparable because it's the same rhythm figure, it's just faster. Your natural, your ear is gonna draw you to play certain things that you sort of stumble upon. And that's cool, you're probably gonna play basically the same stuff at all the speeds. Nothing wrong with that, okay? Now, that rhythm figure that I showed you is, is the most basic one, right? It simply starts on beat one, ends on the uh of four, all eighth notes, no variety, nothing at all, okay? And I get that eventually we wanna have variety, but what, what we're gonna try now is to shift this rhythm figure. Let me show you. In this one, we're starting with a rest. So one and uh, we're not gonna play. We're gonna wait, let it go by, okay? In blues, a lot of times you wanna let beat one go by when you're starting a lick, okay? So then everything's the same. We got the two and uh, we get the three and uh, we get the four and uh, but now we got one and uh, into the next bar. Two and uh, is, is that rest. This guy here's a half rest. Three and uh, four and, uh, and again, it doesn't matter. If you don't know what those symbols are, don't worry. You do a half a dozen of these, you're gonna know what those symbols are and you're gonna know how they work. Just do what I do, say what I say, count as I count, play as I play. It, you, can, you can truly just follow along and you're gonna pick it all up. So if I count this out the way that I showed you earlier, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, and uh, four, and uh. Sometimes I don't say the and, it's kind of under my breath, but if I'm more precise, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two, three and uh, four and uh. And of course, if I play just the one note, right? And if, if this is easy for you, you can skip the clapping, but don't skip it unless this is really easy for you. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. Now, when you get the hang of that, okay, the next thing you would do is you would put on that slow jam track and it's gonna have the mm, da, 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 right? It's gonna have that cowboy. You're gonna try to play along with it. But if you can't count and play by yourself first, don't turn on the jam track. <laughs> it's gonna be really hard. <laughs> and, and, and that's really, it's, it's not what you wanna do because it's what you've been doing, 
in, in all likelihood, right? I mean, up until now, uh, you know, I think about like how many YouTube videos do you watch that have the count in them uh, other than mine? Obviously, I know I count everything, but you probably watch lots of YouTube videos from lots of different people and mostly they don't have any counting or any timing or anything. So you're used to playing sort of detached from the beat. Well, that's not been working out. Okay, so make sure you, you stay with it. I know it can be frustrating, but when you get it to where you can count it and play it, you could do it over the slow track. Okay, it sounds a little bit like this. One and uh, two and uh, three. And if I just do the single note, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, three. Right? And of course, then I change just the last note and all that, but I'm gonna mess it up. Right, this actually starts to sound a lot, a lot more musical. All just because we got off of beat one. And I'm not going to take too much time with that. I'm going to leave you the track for you. Uh, but let me show you what the medium might sound like. And of course I say might because you're the one playing it. Three, four, one. Right, simple. Simple, keep it simple. Right, or I could switch to box one. Or I could switch to like box four. Again, the notes and where you choose to play doesn't matter. Okay, if you find that you're playing along and you're staying with it and you're starting to fish around for notes, it's time to increase the speed or it's time to go on to another track because you got it. And when you got it, you don't have to go back. Okay, remember this is foundational. It stays with you. So what we've done so far is we've started on beat one and we've started on beat two. What can be really tricky is to start on the uh, right? One and uh or two and uh. Uh, but this is really common in blues. So let me show you how this looks. At the beginning, we end up with a rest. In this case, an eighth rest. So one and, we're gonna come in on the uh. So you're gonna have to pay attention. Two and, uh, three and, uh, four and, uh. So the rest of it works just the way they all did. And again, doesn't matter. If you can't read that, doesn't matter. Just do what I do and say what I say. Everything's gonna work out. If we clap this, it's one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. Notice my foot. The foot is really important. I know it seems silly, but you'd be amazed how much I can watch somebody and as soon as I see their foot start to bounce and do weird things, I know they're about to make a mistake. The foot matters. Count out loud, tap your foot, get the clapping going. When you get that, right, single note. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three, the uh, four and uh, one. And notice that one is a rest, so I'm stopping. I'm not having the guitar ring out. That's important too. And, and truly, depending on where you're at, that might be really, really tough. It might take days to get to where you can do that, and that's okay. Take your time, just you know, be kind to yourself, especially if you've never done this sort of thing before. It can seem very tedious, very taxing. At first, I promise that as you get more comfortable with it, you'll get to the point, I, I've watched many of my students, they get to a point where they can't imagine not playing something with a count. It, it becomes such an integral part because it's an integral part of music. So you're gonna, when you get the hang of it and when it finally starts to sink in, you're gonna wonder how you ever got along without it because it's a huge part of music and we're trying to play music after all, okay? So let me show you what this sounds like. I'm, I'm gonna leave it to you to play uh, to the slow track. I'm gonna play to the medium speed track just to pick things up a little bit and just so you can see that this sounds a lot cooler. A one, two, three, single note. One, two, three, four, up. So we're starting and ending on an uh. 
make it a little bit more interesting, just changing the first and the last. All right, I can change more, stay in the four note solo pattern. Go to box one, maybe. Double stops. Like I said, all of those things, when you're fishing for notes, you've got the rhythm, all right? Uh, let me show you one more example. And this time, we're gonna do kind of like we did before. One and uh, that's all a rest. Two and, that's a rest. A, uh, three and a, uh, four and a, uh, one and a, uh, and then that's a rest, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a, uh, that's all a rest. But again, you don't have to necessarily know how to read it. You're gonna figure it out. <laughs> you're gonna get there. Probably just in these few examples, you're already starting to get the hang of it. If we clap this out, right? One and uh, two and a, uh, three, and a, uh, four, and a, uh, one, and a, uh, two, da, three, and a, uh, four, and a. Uh. Again, one, and a, uh, two, and a, uh, three, and a, uh, four, and a, uh, one, and a, uh, two, three, and a, uh, four, and a. Uh. With the single note, one, and a, uh, two, and a, uh, three, and a, uh, four, and a, uh, one, and a, uh, two, Three and uh, one more time. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh. Now again, depending on where you're at, that could have been really, really hard <laughs> or not that bad at all. If it's not that bad at all, jump into the slow track. If that's not so bad, jump to the medium track. If that's not so bad, jump to the fast track. If it's really hard, take your time here. Okay, make sure you can count and play first and then go to the slow track, then go to the medium track. Let me show you what the fast track sounds like. A one, two, three, four. All right, keep it easy at first. And you might find out that as you get to the faster tracks, that while you can play that rhythm figure at that tempo, it really doesn't sound very good. That's also a good experience. <laughs> you might not like what you play. In fact, most of the time, you're probably not gonna like what you play. That's also part of the experience. If you play it and you don't like it, don't do that again. <laughs> All right, so that's four counting examples. This is a great place to start. now. Uh, these are all, you know, I'll say triplet based, triplet feels, the shuffle, slow blues, whatever you want to call it. We're dividing each beat into three pieces. Of course, there's also straight feels, but I kind of just picked one for now. So we're going to start right here and I'm going to leave you with all these jam tracks, this video, you know, the whole thing. I really want you to take some time and practice this stuff. Again, even if it's only a few minutes a day, it helps and it gets better. Okay, so as always, count slowly, right? One note, you know, clap. Do the, do the clapping or play the single note, both it, it even is great. When you get that down and you're playing at a nice comfortable tempo, grab that slow track. Just try to play along with the cowbell. Start with just one note. Keep playing it until you can do that easily. Then try to change just the last note. When that's easy, try to change just the first note and the last note. Later on, you can start to, you know, shuffle things around and make stuff up. When that speed, when that track speed gets dull and you find yourself fishing for more notes and that kind of thing, and you're not making mistakes. Okay, if you're making mistakes in the rhythm because you're fishing for notes, you need to focus more on the rhythm. But if, you, if you're making mistakes and staying in time, that's okay. Okay, that means that your brain, your rhythm part, we want that rhythm part back there, that inner clock just locked in on what's going on. 
and that leaves a lot more of your brain power to come up with cool notes. So if you're getting bored, it's time to go to a faster track. Keep things interesting. All right, so I'm gonna leave you with all this to get started on. It's a great, great place to get started. So do this, download everything you see near, around this video, whatever. I'll leave it somewhere, depending on where you're seeing this. I'll leave it nearby. Make sure you download it all and get to work on it. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.